Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating the Hark Barra test for normality that has been derived and proposed famously by Harke and Barra in the 1980 paper. The Harke Barra test is a very efficient and simple procedure that uses sample estimated skewness and courtesies to arrive at a test statistic that can be then used to assess the normality of your data series. And it is quite commonly used in economics and finance research to determine whether your raw data is normally distributed and whether you need to transform it or modify it somehow before you, for example, undertake regression estimations. And here, as a simple and relevant example, we have got four commonly used macroeconomic indicators for the UK economy, starting in 1855 and ending in 2016, that is from the uh, Centuries of Data project. We've got population growth, real GDP per capita growth, unemployment, and inflation in percentages. And let's calculate the descriptive statistics, that is quite common uh, of a convention to report descriptive stats before you undertake any formal testing, and then use Hake Barra to assess the normality of these four data series. So in terms of descriptive stats, we'll just calculate the mean, the average, median, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, skewness, and courtesies, and then we'll assess the normality using Hake Barra. Without further ado, let's just calculate the mean as the sample average. The median we can calculate by just copying that across and changing this formula to median. The minimum and maximum can be calculated using the min and max functions respectively. The sample standard deviation, the unbiased estimator for a standard deviation in your sample can be calculated using the stdev.as function as usual. And skewness and access courtesies are calculated using the skew for skewness and cut for access courtesies functions in Excel, respectively. Please note that the curd function already calculates the access courtesies, so sample courtesies minus 3, so you don't have to subtract 3 again from the output given by the curd function. And then we can figure out the number of observations in our sample by just using a count function and applying it to the whole series. And then we can just drag this across to calculate the descriptive stats for all four series, the population growth, the real GDP per capita growth, unemployment and inflation, respectively. And now we have got already enough data to figure out our Hake Barra stats. And those use the number of observations and multiply them by this weighted sum of skewness squared and access courtesy squared. The logic is quite intuitive. First of all, the skewness and access courtesies of a normal distribution are zeros, so the further away they are from zeros in any direction, the more suspicion can arise in terms of data being non-normal, and also the greater the number of observation is, the more reliable you can judge that those deviations are not random, that they manifest some prominent non-normality in your data. So let's just translate this formula into the language of Excel, multiplying the number of observations for each of our four series by this sum. Skewness squared divided by 6 plus access courtesies squared, again, courtesies minus 3, but we don't have to subtract that as Excel curt formula already calculates the access courtesies, cannot state that enough, divide by 24, and we close the bracket and arrive for population growth in particular, at a Hake Barra stat of 4.43. Well, how large is that? How high is the statistic and is it enough, is it high enough to determine that population growth is not normally distributed? And what's going on for all four data series? Well, we can already make some qualitative judgments saying that population growth is the closest to the normal distribution of our four variables, unemployment being the second closest, real GDP growth being the third closest, and inflation being the furthest away from the normal distribution. 
However, that's not the end of the story. The Hake Bearer procedure, as proven by the authors themselves in 1980, can allow for formal testing for significance. They have showed that their statistic is asymptotically distributed as a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom. So we can use the chi-squared right-tailed distribution inputting the value of the test statistic and two as the number of the degrees of freedom to assess the p-value, the probability that this deviation from zero, you would have expected zero for a perfectly normally distributed variable with skewness and excess cadences of zero, isn't it? Well, the probability for population growth is 10.93%, meaning that it exceeds the conventional confidence uh, threshold of 10%, meaning that you could reasonably suggest that population growth is indeed normally distributed. However, for three other series, namely real GDP per capita growth, unemployment and inflation, the deviations from normality are statistically significant, and all are significant at 1%, these p-values being lower than 1%, notably, and very close to zero in that regard. So it means that to satisfy the assumptions of many statistical tests, you would have to modify your data to approach normality or use non-parametric tests instead. And that is the hake bearer test for normality that can be fruitfully applied to assess assumption violations and deviations from the normal distribution for your data. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in finance, economics, statistics, and so on and so forth you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.